So I just started recording. Um, hi, everyone, again. Uh, welcome to this talk but by Anusha Teisuraman. Uh, Anusha recently joined SoFar Ocean uh, as the head of marketing. And so we just expect her to share her path, working on how she gets to working on climate, and tell her what SoFar Ocean does and what is it about. And then we'll just have a chance to ask her questions. Um, I am super excited about this talk, not not be, not just because the topic is super quite interesting, uh, but uh, also because Anusha is my fellow alumni from Terra de Do. Uh, we went to the same uh, like cohort in this bootcamp to dive deep into climate change uh, and all the science uh, behind it. And also to learn how to how to transition our careers into this field, um, Anusha did this uh, pretty successful. She's working on the climate right now, and um, also I know they have a few openings in Anusha's team. So maybe that's a great chance for someone to uh, talk about their interests. And also, I wanted to say that this event is hosted by Work on Climate Community. For those of, uh, of you who are not in Slack yet, the, um, uh, Work on Climate is a Slack community that helps people pivot their career to climate uh, through a variety of programs. Um, come join us. Yeah, I am Lena. I will be facilitating this uh, event with my um, fellow uh, Sam. Uh, who's helping me to do this. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to um, just drop them in the chat. Also, um, we'll, I'll put a uh, doc, share a document in, in the chat. So we all ask you to collaboratively help us uh, to put this file with notes and questions uh, from this meeting. So people who cannot attend can see it after. Uh, so yeah, I think Anusha, it's uh, it's all yours. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lena. Um, hi everyone, my name is Anusha Seturaman and I have been in the marketing world for many years. So I just, by way of quick introduction, I have, my undergrad was actually in engineering, computer science, and I worked as a developer for a couple of years. And then I, wanted to move on. I wasn't really interested in being a developer anymore. So I sort of wanted to still maintain that connection to technology. And I really liked marketing because I found it to be very creative. And uh, so I moved to startups. I've been in pretty much startups my whole life, um, working life. And I have been in startups that went bust, startups that got acquired, startups that had an IPO, um, very early stage startups, so it's been definitely a very interesting experience. I spent a few years at Microsoft as well when my startup got acquired and we uh, went to Microsoft. Uh, so that was like an interesting uh, insightful experience into how big companies really operate um, and how it's so different from the startup world. And just in terms of climate, and I've heard uh, intros from all of you, so thank you for that. It seems like we have a few who are marketers, we have a few product folks, we have a few more technical maybe who are keen to learn about marketing. So this is this can be a really informal group. I'll do a quick introduction and just ask me whatever is on your mind. Uh, and if I can answer it, I will. So in terms of how I got into climate, uh, I have been like just from from a personal point of view is thinking about sustainability trying to live a really sustainable life uh, very for the last years uh, on the planet and not sure it didn't happen sooner but over the last year I started thinking about how I could really just bring this to a full-time work environment like why not and so I I'm surprised I didn't start thinking about that sooner but um, then I once I once that idea took um, once that seed was planted I just wanted to slowly start looking around to see what was out there uh, the kinds of jobs do I want to study what would make the most sense even practically like I have a certain skill set how can I take that and then go and do something in climate or do I have to do something drastic and just start from scratch 
So I was thinking of all these different options. And then I came across this Terra.2 as I was searching uh, for different things. And this was really just very interesting to me because it was a 12 week program uh, to gain basic understanding around the different problems and solutions and climate and what folks are doing out there. It was it, I mean, I'll be honest, it was hard from a time management perspective. You know, I was working full time at a startup, uh, very hectic. I have two young kids. Uh, I was simultaneously started trying to uh, find this potentially new job uh, while studying or trying to study at Terra. So it was pretty busy overall. I didn't get to spend as much time as I could on Terra. But the thing that I like about it is that uh, all of that material is available to me anytime I want to go and look at it. Um, I can always look and learn from it. So that was important, I think, just so I have access to it. Uh, and I definitely found that material useful too. So it was more, I would say it was one of the stepping stones and one of the resources that I used to just equip myself better to get into the climate space. Um, and um, I actually came across multiple different resources. I'm, I'm thinking I'll just put together like maybe like a quick list. Um, uh, this so far job posting, so where I'm at right now, so far ocean, I learned about so far actually through the work on climate jobs, um, um, I guess channel on Slack. And I can't remember how I came across work on climate, probably somewhere on Twitter. Um, so I found the so far job and I was, I. I, I also found a few other like opportunities on LinkedIn. I just started looking for different climate uh, companies and reaching out to founders and chatting to them. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, I, I spoke to multiple different companies before I decided to land at SoFar. And what was really interesting to me about SoFar was that it was this category creating opportunity. And that was very similar to what I had done at my most recent startup in the AI space. So just to tell you a little bit about so far, um, we're an ocean intelligence platform. Our mission is to build the sustainable future powered by ocean intelligence. And most people don't realize this uh, in terms of just how much we're all impacted, like humanity as a whole is impacted by oceans. Firstly, 70% of our planet is covered in oceans and 90% uh, of global trade makes its way across oceans. And I think this came to the forefront recently because of the shipping crisis that we've been seeing uh, unfold around us, uh, around us. And even just from a climate and a weather perspective, ocean really affect us. Like they drive our global weather and climate. And not many people really understand this. For example, uh, everything. I, and when I say people, I mean obviously like the general public about how oceans are really just so important um, to this whole climate story. And for example, just like the hurricanes and the tropical storms that we see around us, they're all kind of powered by these ocean processes. So anyway, in general, like so far is here to change this conversation around oceans. We want to educate about ocean impact. We want to basically elevate this, um, how oceans are so critical to climate action and hopefully enable climate action through this ocean intelligence. And to tell you a little bit about the product uh, and what we have, we're a full stack platform. We have hardware. So we have these different buoys that we build, uh, which collects all these different ocean um, statistics, whether it's the wave, the sea surface temperature, pressure, etc. Collects all of that. And then we have thousands of these out in all the five open uh, ocean along the coast, as well as in the open ocean. And we're collecting all this data. And we sell the buoys, of course, to researchers, academia. We also give away access to the data to, for academic purposes. This is a free license that we provide. We also sell the license to governments. And we also build applications ourselves on top of this data uh, to enable these uh, climate adaptation and mitigation solutions. One of which is what we call Wayfinder, which is uh, um, it is it, so it basically enables the shipping industry to be more um, efficient in their voyages. So it's a voyage optimization solution. And from um, whether it's, you know, making sure that they're avoiding storms and going, it's a very real time tool. So every six hours it's updated and we're giving them very real time information about you powered by all of this weather that we collect from the oceans. Um, 
And so this enables them to, of course, like save money, uh, travel safely, and also ultimately like reduce emissions by reducing fuel usage. And this is something that the International Maritime Organization is also going to enforce pretty soon for shipping companies to follow certain emissions regulations and guidelines for their industry. So that's one of the applications. And there are multiple different applications that we're going to start thinking about as well. So, the, um, and quick plug here, we are hiring across the board for so far, not just in marketing, of course, I'm hiring in marketing, but also just across the board, you can find multiple jobs on our jobs portal. Um, for me in marketing, I have only one job rec out there, but I'm also hiring for other roles. I just need to get them up on the site. But if you have interest, like reach out and we can see if there's a fit or not. And uh, just, Quickly, like this was something that Lena had provided to me as a way of introduction and also just giving upfront information before people ask questions. In terms of what marketers uh, can do in the climate space, what I found is that the way the climate industry is picking up and the kinds of products being developed, you can use your experience just as is, like which makes for a very practical transition. I've come to so far and found that um, I can pretty much repeat you know my playbooks from past experiences it's of course a different industry it's different it's a different audience and you'll have to learn uh things but that's sort of like a transition to any company so i think um it, and having access to some of the tools that i did or that i uh, undertook like terra for example was just helpful for me to have more knowledge as i was getting into the space all right i'm happy to answer any questions um or anything that the uh, folks here want to ask me you can feel free to like unmute or you can just chat it in anything is fine yeah thank you so much Anusha for the insight insightful presentation of your path and uh what so far does I didn't know about so far much before your talk and sounds really great especially that um uh, Regulation is going to take place uh, in this space. It's really, really great. Um, yeah, if you, uh, to the audience, if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat if you want me to uh, ask them for you. And I'll call on as many people as I can to unmute yourself and ask Anusha your questions you're interested in. I, I I have a question, and first of all, thank you so much for for creating this forum. Uh, it's 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 shockingly difficult uh, to make the transition. So I've I've been in advertising uh, for twenty four years. I've worked in ad agencies and in house, and I've been volunteering with numerous nonprofits. In fact, I'm in Las Vegas right now uh, attending the DEMA show, which is the world's largest. Uh, dive show, and I have been going booth to booth talking to marine conservation nonprofits. Um, but I'm also, you know, trying to get in with. You know, I'm not anti-profit. I'm pro-planet. So I'm just I'm trying to find um, uh, a company or a nonprofit or anybody who's doing anything to help the the, the planet um, and transferring my skill set. And I'm finding. Um, that there's not a lot of jobs uh, out there for creatives. You know, I've reached out to even climate people, climate base, Ed's clean uh, newsletter, uh, and certainly the the work on climate uh, Slack. And th there, every now and then there are these these few, you know, a, a lower level social media person. What is so far, uh, you know, plans? I guess for more of a senior creative. Uh, leadership, you know, call it a communications director, or whatever. Uh, I, I realize, you know, in my industry, it's creative director. That doesn't exist anywhere that I've seen in climate tech or 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 the nonprofit space. Um, and what advice can you give? Because you know, right now I'm like working on rebranding myself, re, you know, reframing. Um, I certainly have the skill set, and I've been volunteering with numerous um, marine conservation groups, you know, over the last five years, and it's still like. The, it, it doesn't seem like the industry has woken up to if you need investors, if you need customers or you need volunteers, you need people who know how to tell your story, build your brand and execute that consistently across a variety of, of, of 
media channels and I don't yeah. know. so I'm 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 all ears you know what am I doing wrong or what you know what are what are the where are the opportunities yeah um yeah thank you Jeff so uh one question back to you is as a creative director like what what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Is it more storytelling with graphics, storytelling with uh, words? What What do you? Do? Uh, my background is copywriting. My okay. background is copywriting. So, but yeah, I mean, I am I am media agnostic. I mean, I you know obviously produced you know TV, radio, print, website, social, mobile, events, collateral, uh, fundraising, <laughs> you know, campaign efforts. I mean, it it whatever is is required it's just um and i realize you're not going to see big budget tv campaigns or radio with with a lot of these organizations but you still need to tell the story and you need to tell it well because you're not the only carbon sequestration company or the only aquaculture company or the only desalination company or the only fishery you know there's that's the good news there's a lot of startups out there you know working to to help our planet uh but none of them seem to have embraced the importance or value uh maybe they just don't understand it maybe they see it's not ne necessary uh, i'm just curious uh, what you what you're seeing yeah so i think um uh, most of the climate companies today are going to be the smaller companies and they're not going to have a need for a very specialized role. I think the way I would look at it is more building, like positioning your experience as, so marketing is wide, like, you, you know, it's across so many different like uh, categories inside of marketing and no one person can really be uh, supremely like knowledgeable about everything inside of marketing. You have your skill set. I come from a very product marketing um, background but i have broken into this sort of like leading marketing space for a few years and i think especially for startups and mostly in the climate space right now you'll find a lot of these smaller startups where they're looking for a hands-on uh someone who can execute uh but also has like a good strategic vision which comes from experience and how you've been telling stories for a long time i would sort of look at it as looking for something that's more like a like a marketing leader or come in as the first marketing hire or you're going to tell stories you're going to do this and then you're going to fill up with so what i've always done is just built this army of freelancers and agencies that i can rely on to help uh, fill in the gaps as needed and that's kind of what that, that that's what makes sense in a startup like especially if you're budget constrained and this is mostly where most climate startups are today, I think early stage and trying to, so I wouldn't go and look for like a copywriting role at a startup or, you know, I would sort of try and position it as something that's more well-rounded and looking for that and positioning yourself as someone who could come in and be that well-rounded person because you have so many years of experience. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you, thank you for that. And yeah, no, I'm not. I'm I. My skill set is far, far beyond copywriting. Yeah. It's project management. And, you know, uh, every everything else that that you would possibly need. But um, yeah, okay, I, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I. And yes, I, I have not seen anything as specific as a copywriter or even a designer or an art director. Or nothing, you know, nothing like that at all. Yeah, although more of these bigger companies like Microsoft, for example, has like the sustainability division and they, I, I would also look like Amazon has their climate pledge and there's just a lot of like public um, PS, PSA type campaigns that these companies would do where there's like a strong storytelling element. So I would also look at something like that as potential and maybe you're already doing all this of course and I'm I, I have I want to be closer I want to be closer to a company that or or a nonprofit that's actually doing something to not greenwashing like I want to work with the people who are on the ground who are actually impacting the, the plagues <laughs> that our planet faces right now Jeff can I jump in yeah. um can I recommend just, I mean, I'm obviously biased towards this industry because I work in it, but I work in the carbon dioxide removal industry and it's super burgeoning. 
And so I think there's a lot of startups that are also raising a lot of seed and series A rounds that need a ton of storytelling because carbon dioxide removal is very unknown. Um, and so I think, you know, pursuing kind of, it sounds like you're already looking at, you know, climate based and everything, but if you see carbon dioxide removal companies on there, I would mm -hmm. just even reach out and be like, do you need some part-time work? Like, even if they're not listing anybody because they might want some work and just don't have the resources to hire yeah. a full-time staff. We actually do have an art director. Oh, um, wow. So there you go. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, but like, you know, we, we pay him scraps and he does it because he really supports our cause and everything um, because we're still bootstrapped. Sure. Technically, it's part time. Technically, it's part time. Yes. That's Laura, my co founder. Okay. One of my co founders. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, I think you're actually in a deeply, deeply needed skill set. I think that's what you have. And I think we're just about to like burst into that skill set in the carbon scene as these mm. companies scale. And really, it's as they raise funding, because right now, like so many companies like us are bootstrapped and just cannot afford. We desperately need marketers, but cannot afford marketers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have done what you said, you know, on the work on climate and thank you to the work on climate team people. Uh, it, it is a godsend. And I've, I've, I've done it at least 20 times where somebody was posting for a data scientist. I'm like, hey, I'm Jeff. I'm not a data scientist, but here's what I do. And maybe when you uh, get around to it, uh, you'd look at me and we can talk. And so I've, I've done that. And you yeah, know, well, DM me. And if we, if we raise seed rounds. Uh, we would love your help once we're able to pay people. <laughs> sure. Will do. Thank you. And sorry to take up so much time. Just to add on to that too, um, at Climate People, we are a tech recruitment agency. So a lot of people do come to us looking for those type of roles. And we kind of like to like position it, like you were saying, is like to sell yourself to them. Because oftentimes, a lot of times these companies are really tech oriented and they're thinking from that tech lens and not from the storytelling and the kind of selling yourself in the brand perspective. So like you can go in there and just kind of present yourself and be like in the future. And like, these are the ways that we're going to go. And as we grow, we're going to need this brand and the storytelling. I think that's really helpful as well. And like just getting ahead of the curve right now, all of these companies are, like we said, seed A, really small startups. And then as they grow, if they recognize you and they know who you are, they're going to remember that when they're looking to expand. So that's a trend I've noticed at least. And similarly, I ended up getting my job because I applied for a recruiting role and then came in and was like, I have no recruiting experience and I have no desire to be a recruiter, but these are what I, like, what I do have to offer and kind of sold that and it ended up getting a job. So definitely keep doing that. I would recommend. <laughs> Actually, oh. one of the things, I don't know if you saw this, you follow this uh, founder of Lower Captain, Cap, uh, Carbon Capital, uh, Chris Saka. He said that today, the most important skill set for really like making it in the climate space is to have these storytelling capabilities like go to market because that's what's like strongly lacking. I don't know if you've gone on all these like VC firm sites and looked at all the different companies that are out there. There are so many of these smaller VC firms like USV is a climate focused fund. S2G also does something specific to oceans. They have an ocean fund. Then they also have one more, which I forget. A lot of these firms list all their open roles and you're probably going and looking on them, but I would try and yeah, just see if you find something that makes sense for you. Most of them are going to be like, um, you know, one marketer and maybe part time to start. Um, something to think about. So I converted my career last year to working in climate change and I have a long history in real estate. And when I, when I decided to make this change, I was thinking all of these new companies that are being started need people with different skills. So I'm going to, so I'm going to find something. And, and then ultimately I became a builder with Siobhan and another co-founder. So I'm, still working for free, but working on something that I really care about and we can grow into a new business. So I don't know if you're open to the idea of being a builder, but that's working for me to make my switch into climate change. But I don't know really anything about marketing. I have a business background, but not marketing. And I'm really struggling with the marketing stuff because there's so much to know and just trying to learn as much as I can, as fast as I can. And and be valuable in that space to the company as well. 
Is is there a question in there, Laura? No, no. I guess I was I'm responding kind of to Jeff. Okay. Um, but um, I guess well, a question then for you, Anusha, is: Do you have any suggestions on where to find this information? Is there something like Terra dot do for marketing in climate change? Yeah. So I recently came across this. Um, uh, Slack community again. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Tofu. Yeah. You have. Yeah. I'm connected with Tofu. Yeah. Yeah. They have a bunch of, I guess, you know, Bettina, maybe she's the one who started it. They have a bunch of, I just recently got connected to that. So that might be an interesting place. I'm sure you're going to find lots of um, people who are maybe looking for just side projects or some somewhere to just contribute there are lots of different marketing groups that i'm a part of like some you have to pay some are free but you get a lot of questions and insights from these groups from people doing real jobs who are that i think that's the best way to get information like someone who's actually doing it and they ask a question and starts this huge comment thread and like there's lots of insights and it's very real world insights so i actually really like those types of groups one of them is uh, one called Dave Gerhardt, DGMG Group, uh, Dave Gerhardt Marketing Group. He's a B2B SaaS marketer who's been around for many years, and he's um, really made it with Drift, and I can put it in here, uh, DGMG Marketing Group. I forget the exact website. Um, but they have a Facebook group. You can pay 10 bucks a month to get into that Facebook group, or just look for his follow him on LinkedIn and find his insights like there are some really interesting points he makes it also depends on what your product is like what are you trying to do are you going after consumers are you going after business like b2b b2c I think that's something where it it can there are lots of similarities but also differences at the moment we're we're a small b2c company but we see great potential as a b2b company so and we're using a social media campaign to drive customers to our site. Mm -hmm. um, but there's so much I don't know. Um, social media is more Siobhan's area of expertise. Um, but one yeah. thing we're trying to figure out is like SEO strategy. Yeah. It's so, so hard. One thing I will say is that SEO takes a lot of time. So here's the thing. When I was at my previous startup right before, so far it was an AI startup in the responsible AI space. And we were tiny when I joined. We were, I was like number 15 or something. This was back in 2019. And we had very limited money. Um, but what really worked for me was this content marketing strategy that I started. And over time, like we started it right away, a lot of content across multiple different channels that we would produce, like so owned like content that whether it's blogs or whether it's um, quick social posts or whether it's podcasts or whether it's like a quick video that you can just record talking about a concept. And then I repurposed a lot of stuff. Like if we created a quick video, so it's easy to do these types of things where you just get like two other people who are doing similar things and you host a panel like have someone moderated, have a conversation, record it, you have a video asset, get a quick freelancer, you can do it yourself, write a little blog about it, um, and then convert it into an audio file as a podcast. Obviously, you're going to create like we did a lot of like taking that video, creating snippets. So on LinkedIn, you get a lot of engagement for these short videos, like 32 seconds to two minutes. Um, so just repurposing the stuff like all over the place and we really built this content engine that helped really get our SEO up there and it was all primarily because of this organic content strategy that we employed. Well that is our vision you just outlined our vision really well so we just have a lot of work to do now to get it done. And, you know, I relied a lot, like for me at Fiddler, when I was there, I was like a one person team full time for the longest time. And I just like, I had multiple different contacts, like found freelancers, found agencies, just for all these different platforms that I could use to really fill those gaps and get stuff going fast. And those same people I've tapped into even now at so far, and that that you're just sort of building the this a group of people that you can rely on, which in marketing is actually like a very sort of common and 
easy thing to do because you're not never going to have full-time resources or even full-time work available for some of these things where you just want someone who's a freelancer or part-time but that's super useful to move things along quickly awesome thank you sure Any would you say it's a great site um, for finding freelancers? Like what's a, a site you would recommend? Yeah, this is a hard one. I've tried a couple of different things in the past, which did not work. And I've just relied on my network. I pull, I go and ask all the different marketing folks I've worked with in the past to give me freelancer recommendations or um, people that they know are writing. And I have found on LinkedIn, if you just search for content, freelance content writer, the few of them show up that I just like cold outreach and see, like I always try to just do a quick trial project to see if it's gonna work or not, like write a blog for me for, I don't know, like a couple hundred dollars, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard one to find the ones that really work. I can't remember the site that I used in the past, which was okay. Oh, you can try Upwork too. Uh, you probably have already tried it. Um, but Upwork is the sort of hit and miss. Again, you just do trial projects and see if it works or not. But my, the ones that I have really liked and that I've stuck with are ones that came recommended through my network. And you find a lot of them offshore, like um, outside of the US. I found a few that I've worked with in India, because I also have a strong network in India. And I found a few that I've worked with there that are very reasonable and do really good work. Uh, Sam asked a question, not about marketing, but um, about ocean solutions. Yeah, do, Sam, do you want to ask it yourself? Sure. Yeah, I'm happy if anyone else wants to jump in with, with more marketing questions. I, I was just curious, based on your, your overview of the ocean space and the data you're collecting from buoys, et cetera, if you do have a bit of a sense of like what, what we can do about climate in the oceans. And I was especially curious about um, ocean iron fertilization, which I know is a super controversial topic. I actually don't know what ocean iron fertilization is. I've only started learning myself about the oceans for the last three months. And I think ocean solutions. So the way we look at it is we are empowering all of these folks to do their ocean research and find these ocean solutions that are going to work. So I'm not the most in, you know, insightful person or the expert in this to say, hey, these are the ocean solutions that are gonna work. I do follow this one person who has started a think tank in this place. You, maybe you've heard of her, Dr. Ayana Elizabeth. Yeah, so I think she probably highlights this. They talk about their, uh, there's this blue new deal. So lots of different things that I'm just coming about, but totally not the expert here to comment on this. Fair enough, thank you. Sure. I got a question, maybe it's a bit overlapping with Jeff's, uh, but um, so from your experience, uh, how big is the role of storytelling in marketing for oceans? It's gonna be huge. So one of the things that I was saying is that most people don't really realize the impact of oceans on climate, especially in the um, general sort of public space. And I think one of the things we wanna do, our goal is to really elevate the discussion around oceans. And I think a lot of that is going to be storytelling, like positioning it in such a way that like, the general public really gets it and understands it. What are these different concepts? They've only started talking about one of the things here, which is because of this whole shipping crisis that has come to the forefront, but oceans sort of operate in the background, I feel for the most part. And I think the way to get people interested and excited and just knowledgeable about how oceans contribute to the climate is going to be largely driven by storytelling. And um, even me, like I feel like before I came across so far, I had very limited uh, understanding of how oceans impact us and how they're so critical to this whole climate conversation. They're, 
just this time at COP26, there was this two hour discussion around oceans in, um, and there've been some declarations that different countries have signed around oceans and uh, how they contribute to climate and what people need to do. But other than sea level rise, which is of course top of mind for especially these um, more affected countries, uh, I think people don't really think about it as much. I can quickly add a little bit to that because ocean is really my passion and my focus and I nerd out on this stuff and now when you when you start knowing too much that's that's when you start to panic and that's what makes you want to volunteer and get involved even more but um, so there's there's a lot of things going on most people don't realize that every other breath you take comes from the ocean you can thank the ocean for that a lot of people don't understand that all of the, of the carbon and uh, that we're emitting that is is being uh, absorbed by the ocean the ocean can't can't take anymore it's it's reaching that point and that's and that's when that chemical process starts taking place of ocean acidification and then now you have crustaceans and other creatures that that develop shells that they I can't develop the shell or it's 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 deformed um, and so we're seeing it at, at that level we're seeing, uh, I live in, in San Francisco, um, we're seeing the global, you know, the, the warming of the, of the waters. So we are seeing the introduction of species that normally you'd see in Southern California or even Mexico that have made their way up into the Monterey Bay, uh, throwing the ecosystem completely off. And we're dealing with a, a purple urchin uh, explosion. They eat the kelp right at the, the, at the hold. So kelp, like imagine like tree roots, you know, so the kelp is on the rocks. These purple urchins come in and they feast on that. Kelp floats away and so does the entire ecosystem that goes along with it. Um, but I've seen some really amazing things like companies that are making 3D printing coral reefs um, specific to that area, not just putting in cinder blocks and then attracting coral, uh, encouraging coral polyp growth. But you see um, they actually replicate the other existing coral in that area um, and they're finding the nooks and crannies and that specific type of coral attract more of the coral in that area anyway there's there's a lot of stuff going on uh, you know there's 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 uh, bioacoustic studies about the shipping uh, um, you know it's really noisy and loud throwing whales and other uh, animals that migrate um, through echolocation there, you know, there's so much uh, shipping travel that, that, that they're thrown off. Um, it, there's <laughs> the, the water, you know, the waterways, the rivers and lakes uh, that are, are being just filled with plastic and other horrible <laughs> things that shouldn't be there uh, affecting the salmon. And then now you have starving orca up in the Pacific Northwest. I mean, there's, it go, it's endless, you know, of, of all of the, of all of the issues from climate change to plastic gyres, you know, in, in the ocean. And I think when people understand the hydrologic cycle, the idea that every drop of water has made its way through every lake, every river, every ocean at some point since there's been water on our planet. Um, so it really is truly connected. Um, and, and yeah, we need, we need to, we need to get those stories out there. And yes, of course, sea level rise, 30 million Americans are going to be displaced I think it's by 2045, um, particularly from Florida to, to uh, uh, New York City. So where are we going to build these sustainable cities? You know, the, those cities that we know and love now, Baltimore, Dubai, New York City, Miami, 84% uh, will be underwater. So um, I've done a lot of volunteer work and a lot of these things that I just discussed and, um, and I, I, it's 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 almost paralyzing um but anyway that's that's why i'm here i, I care and and i'm just so grateful for all of you and for the uh work on climate team and uh it we have to do this now <laughs> there's no time uh to, to to wait and that's why i've been trying to shift my career away from the traditional ad agency or traditional you know corporate tech sector into this and to answer 
uh, Laura, your, your, uh, th and thank you, Laura, for what you said. Um, yeah, what I've been doing is working for free for all of these uh, uh, nonprofits, you know, as a, as, as a senior creative, giving them everything, strategy, positioning, branding, copy, web, TV, radio, I mean, everything. Um, but I'm, it's not enough. So my reason why I've jumped into your world is to figure out how can I do this full time and put food on the table <laughs> at the same time, because <laughs> volunteering for me isn't really enough. I, this is what I want to do full time. So, um, but yeah, ocean, the ocean issues. I can't answer that specific question that you had, Sam, um, ab about um, iron deposits or something in, in the ocean that I'm not sure about, but you can find that. And actually, if you have not been to change now, um, if you go to changenow.org, so they're based out of Paris, they're a global organization, and they have a huge contingency of um, uh, for-profit and non-profit organizations that are working on carbon sequestration, that are working on um, uh, you know, extending uh, renewable energy and battery life. And, and then there's a huge ocean contingency there of organizations, which of course, yes, I've reached out to them too, uh, but it's the same thing. I mean, it sometimes it's just a professor. Sometimes it's it's like a fellowship. You know, sometimes it's this startup, and nobody has any money, and nobody really knows <laughs> what to, what to tell you. You know, they they thanks for the call, but it just doesn't doesn't go anywhere. So um, that's that's my ocean rant over. <laughs> uh, I put uh, so so. Yeah. That already moved just to add to I don't know if you saw that but the, I don't remember the name of the town it was like a few years ago that they already like I think I think there are like 200 people in that town and they voted to move out because of all of these different issues I can't remember the names and I probably can't pronounce it right I'll have to look it up sorry Lena go ahead yeah yeah I put uh no worries I but so far as careers page on Slack or on, on in chat. Uh, so anyone who finds something interesting, I think you can reach out Anusha uh, directly on Slack or maybe on LinkedIn, uh, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm happy to throw my LinkedIn in here for anyone that wants to connect. I'm always open to connecting with more climate connected folks or climate and oriented folks. Just put it in there. Well, one quick comment to add. Um, I, I don't know if everyone knows this, but in Work on Climate, we do have um, starter packs. And I just put the link in the chat. We do have a starter pack for oceans um, that you guys are definitely free to check out and suggest new resources if you see, if you know some really good ones that aren't there. Um, we don't have a starter pack for marketing and climate. And if anyone does have really good uh, resources or wants to create any that they think would be valuable to other people, then I think that would be a, an amazing thing as well. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there. I'm happy to help collaborate with anyone and can probably start something so we can chat offline about that. Amazing. Any other questions? Uh, if not, maybe uh, Sam, should we wrap it up? Yeah, let's do it. Um, cool, thank you Anusha for giving us a talk. Um, Really. Thanks, Anusha. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for attending. And we have this uh, time on our tradition to um, share one thing that you learned uh, from the event. Uh, I'll put a, uh, I, I leave it on events official channel. So I invite you to leave a comment, like just one thing what you learned. Um, yep. Um, Lena, I just want to thank you so much for, for hosting your first event. Um, this was great. You, you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you. I just recently joined uh, Work and Climate as their volunteer on events team. 
yeah, and this is my this was my first event uh, with them. Happy to do this. <laughs> Thanks, Lena. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Right. Thanks everyone for coming. Um, you can reach out to Anusha. Yep. Thank you. Uh, great meeting everyone. Thanks, Anusha. Thank you. Bye-bye.